In this episode of Running the Length of Africa, I make an unexpected friend. I'm going to get to bed. Enter Strictly Come Dancing. And I just set vibes. Receive some bad news. My boss down in Africa. And we come face to face it was huge. with a big cat. Good morning. Morning, brother. Week two. Week two. How's the body feeling? Mate, it actually feels better than it has done for the last few days this morning. Knee's still a bit achy, but I reckon it's just taking some time to adjust. Big day of stomping and in the middle of nowhere. I actually really enjoy being out in the middle of nowhere. Well, yeah, because you're not constantly almost getting killed by mm. trucks, no? That's a positive. I had to jump in a few bushes when uh, there's been a few lorries just like sitting in the hard shoulder and not moving. <laughs> I headed out onto the road, stomping. The first leg was a tidy 32 kilometers. On the way, I was chased by an angry herd of cows who wanted their milk back, but I luckily managed to knock them all out. We stopped briefly to upload our first YouTube video, battling our mortal enemy, the internet, for the first time. It certainly wouldn't be the last. While I loaded in the last few kilometers, the team headed up into the mountains and stumbled upon our insane accommodation for the night. It looks amazing, nestled in between rolling hills and farmland. All we really need is a warm shower, but we got really lucky. They couldn't find the keys to the ablutions facility for us, so instead they gave us an entire room. Three beds, a shower, a proper bathroom and a kitchen. What else could we physically want? You happy, Russ? Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> F*** it, eh? How happy? We don't even have to use our own sh They've got all cut through. Oh, so we don't need to wash anything. Oh, mate. Mate, I'm actually buzzing to sleep in bed. Like, that's not the bad tonight, though. Things like this every now and again are just such. Oh, mate. We really are glamping out here, aren't we, mate? You sold me on this being a difficult journey. Ha ha ha. You've not made it to the combat yet. The boys are up right now. Confirmed W. Did you have any L's today? It was well hot. And you went the wrong way. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did go the wrong way and it cost me like three extra K, but oh well. I just didn't have any signal. It was the end of the day. I was just fucking, I was just like, you know, vibing. Oh, did then you not I looked, that turning? Nah, I looked on the map and went, fuck. Woo! How good to have a clean arsehole. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> We can tell from the noises. <laughs> it was interesting um, what your mate's daughter had to say about the Congo. A few nights earlier, Jared's friend, a frequent traveller in the DRC, had shared some concerning security intel. She basically said to us that we're <laughs> We need to contact our embassies, apparently the South African ambassador there is really, really cool and has a nice property that we might be able to stay up on. But like, as soon as we get to the border, even if we have on paper, like deals, signed, agreement, handshake, like over the internet, as soon as we get there, they'll see us and just go, you know what, today I feel like pushing up your price six times. She also did say that she believes it to be the most hostile environment for expats in the entirety of yeah. Africa. I mean, she worked as a, um, a nurse in an emergency room in Saudi. So like, like, edge of war times. So she's seen some rough things. Yeah. I think we need to experience it for ourselves and just be aware of what could be, but let it come and not go in with any yeah. kind of do thing. We just need to prepare ourselves mentally as possible. Like there's only so much we can do until we get there, I reckon. Now the Congo is definitely gonna be your, the biggest problem, I think. Dealing with humans that want to take us out. AK-47s, that want to take us out, yeah, mosquitoes, it just, and all we'll of that. We'll get through it. Uh, the thing is, despite all of this talk, I'm 100% certain we'll make it. I'm sure we will as well, but my real question is, is Nelly Mandeli going to come That's a different ball game entirely. I mean, her door just gave up today. Yeah. The, the yeah. fact that some very basic dirt roads literally dis destroyed the yeah. door. There was a divot in the road today, and 
Jared went into it and then came back out and it was like, Ooh, like up at a diagonal. I was like, F it's like it's like being on a roller coaster. It, it really is. is. It's like what, riding a bull that's been jacked up on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna stumble through some conversations. Also, I've learned African French. Like I studied with an Algerian school. Also, yeah, link in the description. If you guys sign up for French classes, and I learned French in three months for this, and you guys can too. Basically, if you sign up via our link, you'll get um, a cheaper rate for all of your classes, and part of that discount um, goes towards us as well. You pay one monthly fee, a subscription, and it's unlimited class. The kind of teachers you want, you can cancel just before you start, um, and you can book uh, classes five minutes beforehand. I did it, loved it. Some of those teachers are my friends now, and we still speak, and um, yeah, it's the best way to learn a language. If you'd fancied learning a bit of French, uh, it's not like learning French at school. It's infinitely better. Uh, so take my word for it, you lot can do it too. Very good advert. Oh, yeah. Everyone give her a round of applause, please. Thank you. So Russ, we do have to tell you something about the area that I have. Yeah, go on. This area, there's a known leopard. Yeah. And he says he likes to come down and come around the house a little bit. A leopard? A leopard. It's a leopard country. This is leopard country, yeah. And there's one in the hills. Very good. Yeah, yeah big boy, he says. A lion and stuff like that, even if you're in a tent, you don't need to worry about a lion if they come around you. But a leopard, if once you go, Take out that claw and can open the tent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd love to see a leopard, man. Yeah, I mean, I've been photographing wildlife for like 10 years now, and I've never seen a leopard. I saw a snow leopard. Mm -hmm. No, I'm no, a no. skateboarder. Yeah. Like, Hello, red. Flash. And it was f***ing gone. I turned and I saw it just on the bridge, and it was gone. So beautiful. So yeah, don't go running off on your own advice. Hey? Harry must not have heard this advice and headed out to make a phone call on his ones. Two minutes later, he was back, running. Ah, oh, son, whatever it was, it was fucking huge. What actually happened? So I'm walking down the path, back to the entrance, and I'm scanning the road with my light, like, make sure I don't fucking trip over any snakes, because Jared's put the fear of God in me now. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen a wildcat today. So we've not only seen a wildcat, Stan saw one just outside of here. We're not entirely sure what it is, but I'm walking down the road, scanning me, and I hear this noise, and I look up, and it's a fucking big thing flashes past me into the bushes mate big cat well, i literally just turned around and sprinted back yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> terrible scenes it was like probably 10 meters in front of me and it moved quick mate, i'm not i'm not rko in that sort of yeah. <laughs> oh mate african wildlife is wild <laughs> closing the name The awesome people at Gut Corp. They stocked us up on food. They they refused to take any money for it. Like we insisted, she refused, and then carried on piling things on top of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they gave us the place for like 300 bucks. These people here are awesome. They really deserve the love. It's really it's beautiful. It's so safe here as well. She was saying they don't even lock their cars or their house at night. We're not sponsored, by the way. We're really not. Apart sponsored. from in dried fruit. <laughs> yeah. Big cat territory, eh? No. Yeah, we've seen, seen some uh, interesting animals lately. Uh, I'll uh, keep on my toes then this morning. I think they'd be more interested in the sheep than me though, eh? You'd hope so. Have a good one. Have fun. A light 36 kilometers in the blazing sun took me to our first stop. Bit off, I did it. Just a little bit. Right, my bag is got sweat ingrained into it now. How does it feel that you're probably not going to shower tonight? Get, I'll get the warm bucket out. Nice. When you were planning this mission, how much thought did you put into your baby wiping of camelback process? Um, lots, mate. It's a There's a blueprint for this. So basically, it's really complicated. Probably won't be able to explain it to you in like uh, just a YouTube clip. But basically, what we do is you get a baby wipe, you scrunch it up, and then you just like wipe. Riveting stuff here on day nine. <laughs> Almost 80%, if not more, of the time when I'm running, I'm just muttering under my breath. Every day. Because some if I don't do it, sometimes I forget. And I'm like and my legs are just stop working. What you do to, you do twos and I have ones? To, yeah, I have to remind myself that it's ones, twos. What happens if you go ones and ones? Do you start hopping? Start hopping, mate. Well, I'm a bit tapped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rest.
we're, we're scrapping the mission. We're going to start a barbershop quartet that spread love through Africa. Yeah, sick. Through rock and roll. Cool, cool, cool. Someone else be the front man. I, just, I, don't, I want to be in a band, but I just want to be responsible for like dancing. <laughs> so like you lot sing and, and play instruments and I just set vibes up front. Okay, do you know what the key, do you know what the key to dancing is, yeah? Is you only move like one body part. So it's like... I feel like a lot of people would disagree with you. But then if you're standing up, then it's all hips. You've got to stare straight at something as well. <laughs> it's boiling. Scary. Yeah, it I think it's even hotter now than it was when I got it. Don't pass out. I uh, try not to. If I do, pick my body up on the side of the road, don't deep, mate. Will do. So this is one of the things we do on the daily. Just, just stand by a roadside for ages to get yeah. about three shots. Yeah, we get to enjoy this view while we do it, so. Yeah. Are there really complaints? Yeah. Way back. <laughs> it was only 22 kilometers more until the end but the rolling hills and the heat made them grueling. What are we doing here, Stan? We're jerry-rigging, which is where you put something expensive where it shouldn't be and attach it with very cheap items. So we've got the Insta360, great camera, um, shoots 360 degree video, and we're gonna drive with it all the way, or hopefully all the way, um, and we'll see if it actually survive i think that this is um hilariously dangerous but fantastic at the same time and that's what we're here for on project africa oh look fantastic that is it was a strong start to the second week capping at a tidy 58 kilometers as the sun began to set we finally got back to our original route and pulled up in a slightly rogue petrol station for the night. And yes, the camera survived. Good. Morning. Morning, brother. What's that concerned face all about? Just f***ing going into the desert and there's nothing there. <laughs> Didn't expect any desert just yet. Yeah. Just sort of I'm happened. Just, I'm just Googling it now to see how many lions I'm going to have to knock out on the way. How are your fists feeling today, fella? Good. My, knee, my knee's a bit stiff. I think I've slept on it, but it's gone it like it's gone all okay. puffy this morning. That's not good. You know, if it's a nice hot day, you can hope that they're just lying around. Just <laughs> lying around. <laughs> <laughs> what impresses me is the consistency of the sh joke. <laughs> <laughs> like, can never catch a nature reserve. Yeah, that's it. Well done. It says it's home to the third, to a third of the world's dwarf succulents. Oh, well, that's a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid you <laughs> do a succulent. So I think we're going to be all right, boys. <laughs> right, desert time. Desert time. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Look after me. Yeah. Oh, he is limping slightly, isn't he? I set off on my first 26 kilometer stretch as I received my first dribble of desert. We lost, we lost the top of our uh, washing machine off the roof. Harry's just run about a K to go fetch it. Here he comes. The hero of the hour has arrived. Nice, lovely jog. Hot. Yeah, I bet. A bit further than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And I saw a big spider. Did you? How big? Giant. <laughs> yeah, you big. Jesus. I don't know how Russ does this for 50 odd kilometers every day at my first stop of the day and we were really in the middle of nowhere. We stopped at the only building in 30 kilometers, which looked like something on Tatooine from Star Trek. It is a bit hot, how are you doing? No, you're all right, my knee is definitely swollen though. How are you finding the closest to desert we've had so far? It's a long road, isn't it? It's yeah. Road, your feet, I bet you're feeling the heat as well. Yeah. well. We need to look for the Lion King mountain, the one that like he holds Simba over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and Pumbaa. You've got to set up, set up more chest. Go on, give Seven. us a rendition. Malavissima <laughs> Chest, lad. <laughs> Are you gonna do the honors with that? Of course, I'll You're hold you up. You're gonna hold Russ. Do you know <laughs> hold Russ up. <laughs> What's your tactic to survive this injury? Keep going. Cool, love it. So 
So we've seen a lot of crows on the road and it reminded me of a story. There was a heightened amount of crow deaths on the roads and they couldn't understand us because you know, it's, it's a bird. So it can just fly away. So they decided to do the research to figure out why all these crows died. They eventually figured out that these crows are coming down to the road to actually feed on roadkill. They figured out that when there's roadkill, one actually flies back and sits in the tree to keep watch. So now this made less sense because why, if one's keeping watch, are they getting killed in that kit? 98% of these crow deaths on the road are because of trucks and only 2% by cars. Why are they getting hit by the bigger object more than the small object, like substantially more than the small object? And eventually, after months and months of painstaking research, they figured out that 98% of these crows are being hit by trucks. Because when there's roadkill and the one sitting in the tree is keeping watch for the ones feeding on the roadkill on the ground, he can't warn them of the trucks coming. Because all he can say is, car, car. <laughs> Atrocious scenes. <laughs> That's my joke for the day, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I really that wish it was your only one of the day. <laughs> How's the knee feeling? Genuine question. Can't tell them how the knee's feeling. We're on a knees to no basis. <laughs> <laughs> I continued on for another 35 kilometers. Meanwhile, the boys stumbled upon another unreal place to sleep. This time, they gave it to us for free. Did we secure the place? F***ing sure right we did. We're gonna do another half hour walk. Okay. We've met a fellow Brit. Yeah? Yeah, someone, another overlander he's heading up to Angola. No way. Cycling. Uh, cycling? Yeah. We've got an indoor space to sit and eat as well, which is really nice. Buzzing, man. Just wanted to film this bit to show slightly less hectic side of this mission. I'm currently waiting for Russ to finish the end of his run in the van. I'm just sitting here just soaking up the beauty of the countries that we're going through. Look at this place, man. Unbelievably beautiful. And I think the fact that we're moving through it so fast means it's a little harder to appreciate that sometimes because we're just like get to this stop get to the next stop get to the next stop pick up this pick up that you know every now and again in life you just gotta stop and get out and just look around and look at the beautiful world we live in i can't explain the privilege that we have to be on this mission but as much as we're out here traveling and doing that i honestly believe that you can do that wherever you are in the world we live in a, a miracle. Yeah, just some little roadside thoughts from your boy. At the campsite, we stumbled across this guy, Seb. Well, what, so what are your plans? Where are you, where are you gonna head to? My original plan yeah. was to cycle from Cape Town to Cairo. Yeah. But with the police called civil unrest in, Sudan. well, there's a civil war in Sudan at the mm. moment. I'm looking at possibly sticking west instead and finishing yeah. up in Marrakesh. One element of my trip that I've not experienced in the past, I've been on the road for about 10 days now um, and I've had about 10 punches. Um, so it's more or less daily. It's becoming so frequent at the moment that I'm kind of almost delaying my breaks, thinking, well, I'll just wait until I get the next really? punch up. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> At the moment, I don't know. I've got a lot of freedom compared yeah, to you yeah. guys. I mean, you've got a fixed start and finish point, haven't you? So I'm just like, get up, run, 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 sleep, run, 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 run. Like, is there a part of you that is concerned that you're missing out in a certain way? Whilst I'm young, well, I'm only 26, and I have the capability to, you know, like physically push myself in a way that means that I could create like a world record then I should sure. and then I can do that I do the, the nice things when I'm older sure. maybe with some kids or something to show them around but like yeah, there's almost no way I make it to the end of this mission and I haven't done some kind of permanent damage to my body it's a shame but also like f it. yeah I find the time travels so much slower whilst I'm away than it does when I'm at home I'm in my routine yeah. and that's one element of travel but I love it almost feels like some crazy sort of life extension yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's but, weird how it works isn't it 
Yeah. Definitely look forward more than I look back. Right. 100%. How far forward are we talking? But I do think about, oh, when's my next stop? I think about, you know, can I get to the end of this kilometre? I think, can I get to the end of that road? Can I get to the top of that hill? What did you do for work? Like, what, what, what did you do for work? Okay, so for work, I'm, I'm a refrigeration engineer yeah. in supermarkets. Right. And uh, working for a few years, getting as much money to get them as I can. Yeah. Going away, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, cycle touring and just exploring the world. Cycling is a way, but well, I, I, I love to travel at that pace, that speed, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's a pace of which you can still absorb and feel your surroundings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's different when you kind of feel every way. step of the journey, well, or every like pedal of the journey. You live and breathe it, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's a different kind of immersion. I'm going to get to bed. Me too, man, I'm shad. Great, Great to talking you. to you, sir, yeah. as well, and uh, good luck, mate, honestly. And you, man. I'm going to be following you every step nice as one. well, and I'll be spreading the word. In the next video, I get attacked by a bee, we hunt for scorpions, and I come face to face with thieves. Something go down, bring me down.